Hi everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday morning webinar. Uh, if you are joining us by the webinar, sorry we are a couple minutes late, had a technical difficulty. But today we are going to be talking about using Call for Customer Service Improvement. We have talked about call tracking in previous videos, but today we are going to be talking about it um, just as it relates specifically to customer service, not necessarily its intended use by many people's um, understanding of call tracking, but we found it to be really, really incredibly helpful. My name is Adam Markfeld. I'm the owner of Outdoor Adventure Marketing. We're a lead generation firm for outdoor adventure companies. And in the back, if you're watching on YouTube or the webinar, you can see Kimberly. Say hi, Kimberly. Hi. Kimberly, hi. <laughs> Kimberly helps write the content and uh, is one of our marketers. A digital agency that started in 2009. We're in Tempe. We have 12 full-time in-house staff, and we drive prospects through adventure tour business. Um, my name is Adam Markfeld again. I have a technical background. I'm a digital marketer, uh, a cold brew enthusiast, a father, and a husband. So that's just a little bit about myself. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's conversation. So the question is, um, you know, every business has customer service issues. So yeah, you may not want to admit it, but every now and then someone gets upset. So we generally find out there's an issue when some planes they either leave a review on Yelp or Google Plus, or they complain to your staff or complain to you as a manager. So we went through the archives and found a couple old um, you know, reviews from just you know, Yelp, just to give you an idea about people trying to call for weeks, and when someone answers they're really rude, or um, you know, becoming offended or impatient, people hanging, up on, people hanging up on you, things like that. And so if something like that happens, like if one of your employees has just a bad day, or they're not excited about you know, taking a call, or they're stressed out, or they get in a fight with their significant other, these are the types of situations that can arrive, and these are permanent. These can last forever on the review platforms. So the alternative is that you may never find out that you have a customer service issue, in which case you just start losing business. And most people are not extremely comfortable, or not comfortable at all, giving a business feedback when they're, um, when they're not happy. And then if they, are giving, um, if they are giving feedback, it's typically through a review platform like Yelp or Google+, Plus, in which case it's kind of too late or um, you know, it's kind of hard to, to that review. So how do you stay ahead of the customer service curve? We've talked about call tracking in previous videos, and call tracking is an incredibly powerful um, mechanism for your digital marketing. So it's not just for lead generation. We've talked about it from the perspective of you know, tracking how many leads are coming in, tracking different sources of leads, and making sure that you understand what's happening with your lead generation and marketing campaigns. And that is a very big aspect of CallRail. However, that is not the, that is not the only way you can use it. So in today's conversation, we're going to talk about how you can use call tracking and the call tracking systems to uh, improve your customer service. And there are a couple different methods that you can employ that um, people don't always think of right off the bat when they're going to start doing um, when they're going to start uh, using call tracking and considering customer service. All right, so let's do a brief re recap of call tracking services, just because. Not everybody watching this video might be inc incredibly familiar with them. Call tracking is a third-party platform that you buy and you pay for, and it's online, and it's basically a SaaS platform. So if you uh, want to track where leads are coming from um, as it relates to phone calls, you would use a call tracking system like CallRail. CallRail is the one that we use most often. Um, it's a really powerful system, and they do things very well. So. You create custom phone numbers. You get real-time data. You can integrate it with your website. When someone calls, the number swaps out on your website. And then when they call that number, it then tracks as a lead for a lead generation campaign or something else that you're doing. So when you have those metrics coming in, and you're using different phone numbers for different sources, you might be using a phone number for your website, one for uh, a brochure that you send out, maybe one for a billboard, and then one for uh, an AdWords campaign, and then see which marketing channel is actually generating uh, a good number of leads or generating the right number of leads for your business. Maybe one channel like your billboard isn't generating any leads, and then you know that that money is potentially to some degree wasted. So that's call tracking system, uh, the call tracking overview. So it's used for lead generation of leads, but we're going to talk about it today from a quality assurance perspective. Customer service, obviously important, but how important? 
25% of customers give up because they are kept on hold too often. Being on hold is annoying. We all know it. We don't have a lot of time. We don't want to be on hold. 66% of customers switch companies because of poor customer service. So I mean, I think this is kind of obvious. Uh, if people don't like working with you, it's not going to be good. 85% of people whose calls aren't answered will not call back. People just simply do not call back and don't really leave messages. So if you're missing calls or, um, or answering the calls is an issue, uh, whatever the case may be, they're just not going to call back most of the time. It just doesn't happen. We see this data all the time in our call tracking. And when calls are missed, they're very rarely getting callbacks. Um, they're typically moving on to the next company, especially if they're doing some sort of Google search. And 86% of people are, are happy to pay up to 25% more if they get the right experience. So if people are happy and they're enjoying the experience, they will actually pay you more money. So not only are you keeping customers, but they're willing to pay you more. And it obviously trickles down into um, you know, positive experiences on social and everything like that. So we already know customer service is important, but these metrics kind of solidify that importance. So how do we use CallRail to improve the customer service for our consumers, especially as an outdoor adventure company. The first strategy we're going to talk about is how to determine if you're missing phone calls and how many. So as we mentioned in the last slide, virtually no one leaves messages and no one calls back. Um, millennials don't even want to call in the first place, let alone leave a message. They'd, probably, uh, they, they'd rather text or do something more digital. So if you're missing calls, then you are missing opportunities. And if you're paying for lead generation, then you're really basically just throwing money down the drain because you're paying to get people to call you, and then you're not answering the call, and they're not calling back. And there's a pretty high likelihood that you're not calling them back, although you might be. But oftentimes we see that businesses are not calling back the organization. So in this chart here, you can see out of 81 calls, a lot of those are missed. That's 14%. And then it also shows when the calls were missed by day of the week. So if you're using this is a this is a screenshot directly out of CallRail um, from one of our clients. So if you're missing 14% of calls, that's actually a somewhat low number. But that um, uh, you can see when the calls are being missed on what days. There's also another segmentation of by what time that's not shown here. And you can take actions to make sure that you're not missing phone calls because if you are missing them, that's pretty painful. So uh, strategy number one, determine if you're missing phone calls because people are really not leaving messages and they're certainly not calling you back. So use call tracking to get a feel for that velocity. And then as you're um, taking actions to maybe stop missing phone calls, uh, you'll see these metrics changing over time and you can know if you're improving or not. It's always nice to have the numbers to help support what you're working on. The second strategy is understanding the time and day that people are calling. So not, this kind of falls into the first strategy of not missing phone calls, but even more importantly, you know, when people are calling, um, when is that happening, and how does that affect your flow of business from a um, how does that affect your flow of business from answering the call? So if you're doing tours day, uh, who's answering the phone? And if you do have someone answering the phone, are they answering consistently or are they potentially checking in new people? So what does your business environment look like when it comes to answering phones and what time of day? And if you're giving tours, and a lot of your staff is out of the office able to answer all the calls coming in, you can then set up backup plans for answering the phone. So you could potentially get an answering service that just kicks in at certain times. Maybe it's off hours. Or an answering service that kicks in after three or four rings. And that answering service can simply take the name and number of an interested party. They don't really need to sell yours to do incredible just answered and provided good customer service initially, then we probably would have just booked with them right away. Um, so here in this screenshot, also just right out of CallRail, you can see that on Thursday they get very few calls for some odd reason. Um, but on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday they get the most calls, and then it also shows time of day. 
I don't know that I would necessarily use this Thursday metric as a rule of thumb for this business. Maybe it was just the time period was kind of weird. They only got one call. Um, but it is worth noting that there, there's a definite decrease in calls on Thursday, and then I would keep an eye on that moving forward. Who knows why that is, but it's good to have awareness of when people are trying to call you so that you can make sure you're answering those calls. Back to point number one, because people don't call back and they also don't leave messages. All right, strategy number three, if your call system has any sort of phone routing, it's incredibly insightful to listen to how consumers experience your phone system when they call you. So a phone system and phone routing, phone routing is when you call in and it says, hey, thanks for calling Outdoor Venture Marketing. If you want to talk to someone in the sales department, click 1. If you're a current client, click 2 or hit 2, whatever. Um, that, phone, that, that, that phone tree can be very straightforward, especially when you're setting it up and it feels like it's straightforward. But a lot of times it's a little bit confusing. And if you're listening to calls where people are going through that system, you can actually get a feel for what they're clicking, where they're going, and what they're doing. And that's really interesting and insightful information. Uh, we've also had clients tell us, oh, oh, when I listened to the phone call, I noticed that the call was actually being forwarded to the wrong person. They were getting a voicemail for the wrong person when they were trying to uh, book a tour or, 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 um, uh, or buy something from us. So we've actually um, helped clients identify problems in their system because they're listening. It's actually forwarding to the wrong person. I need to fix that. And that in itself is something that's very hard to determine. If if you're not listening in the call, then have a fee in your phone system. Um, once you've done that, obviously make some adjustments. Try and simplify those as much as possible. People hate phone systems, um, but it can be a little bit painful. You can also set up custom phone systems in call tracking. So if you don't have one and you want one, a system like CallRail actually has that, that call flow. And, um, and you have multiple phone lines at the same time. You can do round robin if you have three different people that are answering. So if you're having trouble answering calls that are coming in at the right time, consider using a call system and setting up some sort of call flow so maybe it rings out everybody at the same time, um, rings out multiple people at the same time, or does a round robin sort of approach. Strategy number four, listen to your employees and how they're interacting with your potential customers or prospects. Someone is answering the phone and the question is, are they the right person and are they doing a good job? Are they friendly to the people that are calling in? Are they enjoyable or are they potentially dismiss dismissive and a little bit apathetic? You can just tell when someone's not excited to talk to you. If they, um, you can tell by their tone of voice, their demeanor, the words they choose. And you don't want those people representing your business when the very first point of contact is someone calling in to learn about it. You don't want that individual to be, um, to be boring or to be off-putting. So there's the personality of the person answering the calls, but there's also um, the aspect of cross-selling and or upselling. So if you offer tours and you have uh, packages, um, you know, we have clients that do Zipline and they do Segway tours, or if, they're, um, if there are more expensive packages that someone doesn't know about, or you're selling a lunch, or there's just a lot of different things you can be doing, is the person answering the calls actually cross-selling and upselling to the consumers? Because if they're not, you're just losing out of revenue. That's possible just from uh, a sales and conversation perspective. If they're just taking the booking, doing the bare minimum, and then putting it down on paper and taking the credit card. That's not really what you want when someone's answering the phone, booking tours, and trying to sell it. So by listening to recorded phone calls, and on the right-hand side here, this is what the recording looks like in CallRail. These are like the little voice waves from the person answering, the person talking. You, can, uh, you play it. You then decide if it's a lead. You can even put values and notes in there. Download the MP3. tells you how long it is. It's, uh, you get a lot of information from these call recordings, and I'd highly recommend listening to them and then hearing how your employees are doing. And then using them as training opportunities, not to you know, batter the employees if they're um, not doing a good job, but saying, hey, I heard you answer this call. I want you to answer with a little more enthusiasm. Or this person asked for this tour, so next time maybe try and upgrade to this tour or try and give them a lunch or a package because they asked about two things, you know, whatever the case may be. 
So that's strategy number four, listening to your employees answering the calls and providing more information and, um, and feedback when they are answering those calls. Along those same lines, our fifth strategy is using the recorded calls for training. So you get a lot of new employees. I mean, in the outdoor adventure space, uh, typically you have new tour guides. You, know, you have new people at the front desk from season to season. And you have an influx of new employees just like any business, but even more so in outdoor adventure marketing. Uh, excuse me, in outdoor adventure businesses or outdoor adventure marketing. Um, so when you are bringing new people, if you have recorded phone calls and you have tagged them as maybe training calls, you can download those MP3s, put them in a Dropbox folder, put them in your training folder, and then when someone wants, and then when someone's hired, they can listen to those calls and understand what you need and what you're looking for. When you say, "Hey, this was a call that was handled really well. This is a call that could use some improvement. Um, this was a call where you could have upsold. This is a call where information was given incorrectly." So people can hear those, and it's a lot easier to process information when you're learning from experience rather than just telling them, hey, make sure you upsell. That's not going to do a whole lot for someone, that, um, for someone that is brand new to the job and they don't really understand what you're saying. So use good and bad calls. Uh, download them. Save them in your local database. And then you can, um, you can then pass those on to new trainees when they come into your business. So those are the five strategies that uh, you know, listening to calls, understanding the time of day, uh, they are just really important aspects to calls coming in and will allow you to have a much stronger pulse on your business. Four of the most popular call tracking systems are CallRail. That's the one that we use most often. It's, uh, it's really powerful. It has a lot of features. Pricing seems reasonable. We use CallRail constantly. Um, PhoneWagon is another. CallCap and FluentStream Technologies. These are all call tracking systems. If you just go and Google you know, call tracking software, you're going to get a bunch of them. But you can easily create numbers in these systems. They record your phone calls. They're extremely easy to set up and monitor and get metrics, which will just add a ton of value for your customers and for your business just right out the gate. It requires a little bit of time to set up, and then you want to check in on it periodically. But it, it, it's, a, it's a pretty solid, um, a solid tactic and strategy for improving the customer service and the quality of your business. All right, so to wrap it up, you know, we're just at about 20 minutes. By using call tracking to improve customer service, you have an advantage over your competitors. Like I said, when we were in Park City uh, just a couple weeks ago, I called three or four different companies to book a tour for 10 people. Not only did we have 10 people, but we did two different activities. We did an ATV tour, and we also did, um, we also did whitewater rafting. And then we had a lunch in between. So between the 10 of us, it was probably about $2,000 or more. I think it was $2,500 in bookings. And in some cases, it was hard to get a hold of people, which just kind of blew my mind. So um, by using call tracking, you can kind of help improve this process, maybe not miss opportunities like that. Customers are calling your business. They don't really call back. They don't leave messages. And you want them to have a really good experience with your, um, with your, with your employees when they are calling in. And make sure that uh, you know, they want to come back and they want to talk about your business in a positive way. And you can do that with the call tracking software. So we're right at about 20 minutes for today, and we keep these short 20-minute sound bites. So next week, we are going to be talking about how to increase the reach of your Facebook posts on your organic Facebook posting. We all know that the reach of Facebook posts has decreased quite. Um, quite dramatically over the last couple of years as Facebook has favored uh, paid ads and is really getting a lot more paid advertisements out of front consumers. So next week we are going to talk about how you can increase your post reach on Facebook from organic postings and what actions and things you can do so that um, you will actually get more organic ID because it is actually a little bit difficult. And there are some very, very, very specific tactics you are going to want to employ in order to make that happen. So you are not going to want to miss that webinar. We are Outdoor Adventure Marketing. We specialize in lead generation for outdoor adventure companies. We do ATV tours. We do snowmobiling, zip lining, skydiving, hot air balloons, jet ski snorkeling, and more. So feel free to give us a call or reach out to us um, at the email address on your screen, and um, you know, we can see if we would be a good fit for you. So thanks for joining us on our Tuesday webinar. It was great talking about call rail and customer service tracking, and we look forward to speaking with you. And don't forget to check us out next week. Thanks a lot.